Hey everyone, this is Tankenstein. Today I'll be bringing you your top five tips and tricks that I wish I knew when I first started playing War Thunder. The things in this list will all save you valuable time, money, and effort. They'll also make you a better player at the game. Whether you're brand new or want a fresh look at War Thunder, this video is the video for you. That said, let's jump right into it. So for number one, plan your vehicles. Make sure that you have a lineup that makes sense so that you can be as effective in battle as possible so that you don't have to train numerous crews on the same vehicle. So make it so that you earn more RP and Silver Alliance in each match and save many thousands, potentially millions in crew training costs. What I mean by that is you don't want to take this Crusader uh, AA Mark II, put it on all of these. That would be a tremendous waste of silver lions so for example if i would go here and i want to train let's say not the black prince but rather the churchill mark 7 43 silver lions if i want to do that on this 43 silver lions go throughout the line it will cost that much to train on each of these pick one crew for that vehicle to be and it will make way more sense especially as you go on the challenger 2 2 f is 300,000 silver lions and really even a chieftain 3-5 or mark 3 is still 140,000 silver lions tons of silver lions and it all adds up additionally some crews have skills relevant to certain types of vehicles like air crew and bombers so if you devote a ton of your crew skill points to defensive gunnery and you use that same crew for only fighter planes you'll be missing out big time you'll have wasted a ton of hard earned crew points so for example right here if i want to go to the wellington uh, mark three bomber click on crew defensive armament i don't really have too much devoted to it because i don't really like british bombing at this br uh or, or really any british bombing until you get really high in the br but either way these are for turrets so as you can see here this has a ton or yeah really a large amount of uh, guns so what you will want to do is to put all these crew points into defensive armament but now all of a sudden if you have a spitfire and you decide to put a lot of defensive armament crew points in a spitfire no one's going to be using it there's no guns there's no uh there's no defensive gunners to really take advantage of that and it will be a huge waste of crew points crew points that you earn by the way by doing well in matches it's more or less kind of like rp except for crew well crew skills i guess so for number two, learn the intangible things like ammo types, vehicle weak spots, and as I just mentioned, crew skills. These are all tremendously important and will oftentimes be the deciding factor in a match. For example, when looking at ammo options, you'll want to pick anti-air for aircraft and anti-armor for ground. Bear in mind that this is not always true as you'll always have to look deeper as some anti-air belts have higher pen than anti-ground belts. So for example, right here, and this is not going to be an example of, you know, anti-ground being worse than anti-air for ground but for the bf 110 c6 it has a 45 millimeters of armor pen but it also has high explosive incendiary ammo which is incredible for tearing apart planes armored rounds for example uh, anti-armor rounds 95 millimeters of armor pen from a high velocity armor piercing tracer shell now for ground you're going to want to pick yourself a good general purpose round like the apc bc or the APCR. However, you may want to save the APCR for special circumstances, as the latter tends to bounce off more sloped armor, despite typically having much higher penetration stats. So, going to the American side right here for the M4A2, you can easily see right here the APCBC is 104 millimeters of armor pen, but you go to the APCR with 139 millimeters of armor pen, it might look way better, but it will bounce off of most things that are not a completely flat surface. Now for vehicle weak points, target plane engines and tail surfaces when flying and target side slash rear armor when attacking tanks. If this is not an option, then make it so that the enemy's armor is on a flat of an angle as possible when compared to you. So for example, for the M4A2, if you look right here, it's at a good slope. Instead of It has 63.5 millimeters of thickness, but because of the slope, it's actually got an effective thickness of 88 from the side, however, it is really significantly less because it's flat armor. Typically, side and rear armor tends to be more flat, especially on older World War II tanks. Much of the same from the rear. Additionally, if you cannot penetrate the front for whatever reason, there are special weak points that you should learn on each tank. But a lot of a good rule of thumb is right here on the gondola or on the turret traverse ring, which you can find right below the turret and just above the hole, basically where the two connect. And finally, fuel weight counts in airplanes. The more fuel you have, the worse it will perform. So choose how much fuel you carry wisely. Three, 
don't feel the need to buy every vehicle or crew every vehicle. As the more you play, you'll end up earning a ton of vehicles, especially at low BRs. And while they don't cost a ton of silver lines each, they'll add up quickly. More so, if you play for a while, you'll end up gaining to certain points in the tech tree where Gaijin might add a new vehicle that is lower BR than what you currently have researched. Do not feel the need to buy those vehicles, unless, of course, you really, really want them. I've had entire vehicle lines added that I haven't even researched because I've played this game for so long. Don't feel the need to buy every vehicle and crew every vehicle because it will ultimately slow your progress towards getting to higher VRs. And a really good example of this is with German ground. As you can see here, the left German tank tree, the destroyer tree right here is just really pockmarked with things I've researched, haven't researched, so on and so forth. If you started this today, you would have to research it from the bottom but because I got like the Martyr 3 once and then whatever, I could just kind of start wherever I wanted. It's just one of those things, do not feel the need to research everything unless you're trying to fill it out or you really, really want those vehicles. And for number four, join a squadron. This will help you to enjoy the game even more and also unlock new vehicles called squadron vehicles. One of my favorite is right here on the German aircraft tech tree. It's the ME 262 A1U1. I've got a review on it. You should watch it. I also go over everything having to do with squadrons and squadron vehicles in my YouTube or my War Thunder Explained series. Now being in a squadron is the only way to unlock these vehicles. In my opinion, they're really awesome. Plus playing with a squadron can help build your confidence and show you how effective functional teamwork really is in War Thunder especially if you end up with a good squadron. Again, I've linked my videos on squadrons below. Check them out. And finally, I have to say, do not chase after a vehicle if your entire enemy team is doing it. Seriously, this will result in not only you not getting the kill, but possibly result in you getting killed. I can't tell you how many times in a plane I swooped down to take out two or three people following a single allied bomber. The same goes for naval and tanks. Do not get tunnel vision. It will cost you a ton of silver lines in the long run. So after all that, I do saw some honorable mentions and I'll be going after them rapid fire. So pay attention. First, watch my War Thunder Explain videos link below. I've been playing this game for probably over six years at this point and I'm a lover of knowledge. So I've started to record almost everything I know about War Thunder and how it works from BRs to the marketplace to everything else. Second, know your BRs. If you have two tanks in your, in your lineup, that are BR2 and then one that is a BR5, those BR2 tanks will be clobbered in your match. Only the BR5 tank might have any chance of surviving. Make all of your lineup similar BRs and learn what enemy, learn every BR in the game if you can, because if you know what your enemy's BR is, it'll give you a much better chance of surviving. Also, know which modules to research first. In tanks, always go for parts first, then go for fire equipment. And with planes, almost always, always, always go for ammo belts first and then pick whatever else you want. I typically go from second tier onwards towards flight performance stuff like compressors, engines, so on and so forth. Finally, know your terrain and tanks and don't give up altitude and planes. Gain sustainable altitude from the beginning of a match and then dive on people as they try to climb up to reach you, but can't because they've lost all their energy. Seriously, this might be the best advice for anyone playing planes of any skill level or BR. Don't just dive down as soon as the match starts you'll end up giving a huge advantage away if you do that. Seriously, all the noobs do it. Do not just dive down to sea level at the beginning of the game. Start climbing up and just climb, climb, climb until everyone else below you, maybe like 3,500 meters, let's say if you're in props, and 6,500 if you're in a really, really fast jet. You'll end up thanking me. Trust me. So that said, guys, seriously, thank you guys for watching this video. It really means a ton to me. Remember, please like, comment, subscribe. Do all that. I will love you forever. Either way, this is Tankenstein. I hope you guys are staying true to yourselves, having a great day, great night, great whatever it is you're doing. I will see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.